All right, welcome back. Uh, this is another one of the medical school application videos where I go through the application process for every single medical school in the country for graduate entry medicine. Uh, as you know, I'll be applying to every single school around the country this year, basically. I'm looking forward to it. So part of my research into each of the different ones, I figured I may as well share this on the channel and actually give a complete breakdown of all of the specifics for each of the schools. Today, what we're going to be doing is going through the University of Western Australia or UWA. A lot of people have requested this one. Um, it's yet another school that I don't know much about. I'm learning now I really think I didn't know anything about any of them, to be honest. It's an interesting one because it's a GEMSAS school but it does things a little bit differently as always, maybe a little bit less differently than what we see with most of the others. So far, we've had a bit of a trend with every single school having their own kind of unique little kind of uh, quirks to the way that they do things slightly differently. But I figured we'll go through this one. Um, it's one that intrigues me again because Perth is actually, I mean, I've always wanted to go to Perth and I've always considered actually living in Perth. It seems pretty chilled and pretty laid back. As well as that, when I'm looking at my options, uh, the cost of living is a whole lot lower. So that's also a whole lot nicer to think about as well. Anyway, so this is a GEMSAS school. So as I did in some of the previous ones from last weekend, um, I'm not going to be going through any of the generic GEMSAS processes because I've already done that in the Unimelb one. Um, you can check it in the GEMSAS admissions guide, which I'll link below but uh, I'll also link below the Unimel uh, video that I did at the end of last year. And you can kind of look through that and I explain like in a lot more detail, the whole process of GPA weightings and all the rest of it. We're just gonna go through the things that are specific to UWA to keep it nice and simple. I will say as a disclaimer, um, this is all based off of the 2022 entry data. We don't yet have the admissions guide for 2023. So keep in mind, things are probably gonna change. I wouldn't say they would change much if they're gonna change at all. It just gives us a bit of a guide to go off of. So the 2022 entry, there was an indicative 46 CSP places available and uh, 17 bonded CSP places. And then in terms of international places, there's also up to 10 international full fee places available at UWA as well. Uh, that gives a total intake of up to 73. So relative to some of the other schools, it's pretty small. It's similar to kind of the Flinders uh, kind of size, that kind of thing. There's some even smaller ones as well, which we'll end up going through. Okay, and then on top of that as well, there's some sub quotas, which we expect. So approximately 30% of places are allocated to rural applicants, 28.5% are bonded. We always see that 28.5% of the CSP intake is always bonded, that's a federal regulation. And then on top of that as well, there are also up to 10% of places allocated to uh, indigenous and Torres Strait Islander applicants as well. And for international students, obviously you'll be applying not through GEMSAS, but direct to to UWA for those up to 10 places that are available. In terms of degree, first of all, we'll go through kind of the minimum requirements as we always do. So you've got to have an eligible degree. This has to be a uh, bachelor's degree at an Australian university or similar. It has to meet with the higher education standards framework. It's the same as the requirements for any other GEMSAS school anyway. So you can check that to, to confirm the details. The important thing with UWA though, is that if you have uh, say an eligible postgraduate degree, but you don't have an eligible bachelor's degree, you can't actually apply. So they say you need to have an eligible bachelor's degree, even if that's not going to be used for the final GPA calculation. Um, if you've got an ineligible bachelor's and then say a master's that could be used, um, it's actually not eligible anymore. You need to have that, that undergrad. In terms of GPA, the minimum requirement is a 5.5 uh, that you need to maintain across the entirety uh, to be eligible to apply. In terms of 2020 adjustments because of the pandemic, I'll quickly go through it because this one's a little bit simpler. I didn't do it with the Deacon one because it's a bit more complex. But um, with UWA, pretty simple. Semester one or trimester one of 2020, they your scores get counted as either an ungraded pass or fail. So it still counts to whether or not you've completed the three years full-time equivalent, but the scores don't factor into the actual GPA calculation. So if you're worried about outcomes, so long as you ended up with an ungraded pass for that semester or trimester, it's not actually gonna factor into the final GPA calculation. Anything else, so summer semesters run in January of 2020 and so on, they're still included, and semester two of 2020 is still included as well. Only semester one is being affected. In terms of the GPA calculation, UWA actually is an unweighted GPA calculation according to GEMSAS. So when you go through the GEMSAS process, you'll have an unweighted and a weighted version, and then Melbourne have their own slightly specialized one as well. So the unweighted one is pretty simple. You just take your GPA from the final three years of study, 
you add those up, you divide it by three, and then you've got your unweighted GPA. So if you had studies in 2020 for that year, you just don't add in the GPA contributions from semester one, only take semester two, and then that will be your that will be that year's GPA and then that goes into the calculation. In terms of postgraduate studies, so they do have a couple of allocations for PhDs and masters by research, they treat them slightly differently. So PhDs, similar to the University of Queensland, if you've completed a PhD by the time of application, then it will be deemed a 7.0 GPA, but it needs to have been completed by the time of application. They also consider masters by research, but they don't actually take the full GPA from that program. What they do is they'll take your bachelor's degree GPA and then you'll get a 0.2 bonus on top of it. So say you had a 6.5 unweighted GPA from your bachelor's degree for three years, and then you went on and did a master's by research, then it would go from a 6.5 to a 6.7 with just a complete boost to it. So that actually is quite a big jump on an unweighted GPA. So uh, if that's your case, then that actually is in some ways kind of a bit of a help as well, as opposed to having to rely on consistency across the entirety of the master's by research. Same thing with the master's by research, that has to have been completed by the time of application. It can't be concurrent at the moment during application. Um, in order for it to for that point two bonus to apply. As always with any kind of GEMSAS school, if you're in your final year of your undergraduate and you're applying and you're gonna be using that for the GPA, that's okay. Um, what will end up happening is for your unweighted GPA, they'll just look at your first and second year or the two most recently completed years, we'll say, in case you're doing a four year degree, and they'll add those two up, divide it by two, get a statistical average on those. That will be used for your ranking for interview. But then what will end up happening is if you were to say get a conditional offer, which we'll go through in later detail, you still need to maintain above a 5.5 to qualify at that point. But effectively the first two years or the, the most recently completed two years of study will uh, be what actually counts towards your ranking and selection. They also say that they accept two year and one year conversion courses and accelerated courses and that kind of thing. But um, if that's the only degree that you have and you don't have an eligible undergraduate degree completed before it, then that two or one year program needs to have been completed before the time of application as well. So they seem to have this cutoff. They don't want any concurrent study unless you're in your final year of your bachelor's degree. Otherwise, pretty much everything to be considered has to have already been previously completed before actually making the application. UWA is another one of the unis that doesn't actually apply the 10 year rule. So that's great for people um, like me, who's kind of on the cusp and it means that technically I'd have the ability to reapply again, actually. I didn't even really think about that all that much. So if you've got a degree that is uh, for 2023 entry, if you've completed your degree before 1st of January of 2013, technically it's outside that 10 year window. And for other unis, you'd have to do uh, additional study and that kind of thing to maybe requalify it. UWA doesn't apply that. So it doesn't matter how old your degree is, it will be considered as normal, regardless of whether it was done five years ago if it's currently being completed or if you did it 20 years ago. That's it. In terms of minimums for GAMSAT, they have a slightly different minimum eligibility. So you need to have a minimum overall 55 as a final GAMSAT score, but then they still apply the minimum 50 in all three sections. Uh, same thing as well, international applicants, you can use either a GAMSAT or a, uh, an MCAT score, so long as the results are available for that sitting that you want to use by the 31st of May in the application year. In terms of minimum, so for international students, same rules apply for the GPA, minimum 5.5. GAMSAT is a minimum 50 overall and 50 in all three sections. And then if you're using an MCAT score, then you need a minimum of 492 overall and a minimum of 123 in each section. So in terms of selection, they actually have in the GEMSAS guide, they actually quote the average for GPA and GAMSAT that achieved an interview, not necessarily a final place, but an interview. And they quote that the average GPA of interview offers was 6.72 and the average uh, GAMSAT score was 68.31. So that actually, I mean, the 6.72, that's quite high, but it's to be expected. 68.31 um, is a little bit lower than I expected. For some reason, I had this idea that UWA had really, really crazy high cutoffs because of the really small intake. 68.31 um, is reasonable. It's obviously still a very high score, but um, it's not quite the same as what we're seeing at places like Flinders, for example, without any of their bonus programs, where the cutoff seemed to be around the 78 mark for 2022 entry. This is in the 2022 guide though, so this is technically 2021 interview, so two years old for 2023 entry. But um, even still indicative, we could maybe put a bit of a buffer and say it might rise to 69.70, 
but I can't imagine that it would move all that much. And so what you can do, let me do it now, is you can actually do a calculation to work out exactly what kind of combo score that is, because they do an even weighting between GPA and GAMSAT score for ranking. So if we take a 6.72, we divide that by seven, we got 0.96, um, and then we add that to the, the average GAMSAT score as a proportion, which is 0.6831, and we end up with a combo score average of 1.6431 for interview offers. So effectively, you could do your calculation on your own GPA and GAMSAT combo, um, and then remember that the GPA is unweighted, and then work out kind of where you're sitting. And the idea is that the middle rung was 1.64 for interviews. Again, it doesn't confirm anything about actual offer places, but at least to get that shot at the interview, um, 1.64 is a little bit lower than some of the Eastern State Uni. So it actually makes it a little bit more accessible overall. Um, it was good news for me because when I ran through mine, my unweighted GPA is actually a lot stronger than my weighted one because my third year kind of tumbled. Um, and so my my unweighted GPA on GEMSAS calculation uh, is 5.938. So if I take that and divide that by seven, it gives me 0.848. And then I add that to my GAMSAT score of 0.84 because they use a weighted GAMSAT score and I end up with a 1.688. So that's a lot, lot more competitive than I was at Melbourne, for example. It's a lot more competitive than I am at most of the unis. Um, it's more competitive than where I am at Flinders and it's around about the same mark I'm a little bit more competitive at Deakin because of their bonus scheme. So given that there's no bonuses or anything, that's probably, UWA is actually probably my most competitive, bar Sydney, who's only taking GAMSAT. So GPA is my biggest weakness, and that was actually really good to see that um, the, the combination of using an unweighted GPA kind of alleviated some of the pressure uh, created by my third year and actually puts me in a relatively competitive spot which means that now my options are pretty open and that actually is kind of terrifying me in a way because then I have to think a little bit more about what I'm potentially going to have to uh, make decisions on. Hopefully I do have choices next year but I can't really predict the future either. We'll just see what happens. So then next is the entry scheme. So there's the rural entry scheme and the indigenous entry schemes. For rural applicants you pretty much have to qualify under the standard GEMSAS rules so living in an RA2 to RA5 region in Australia. You'll also have to obviously tick a box in your GEMSAS calculation, provide documentation, uh, and you'll also have to provide a written statement as part of your application explaining why you're choosing um, to apply and why you'd be best suited to rural medicine and that kind of thing as well. We pretty much see this every uni does that stock standard. For Indigenous applicants, uh, you apply direct to the university through uh, the University of Medical Science and Dentistry and I'll link that below as well. You still can apply through GEMSAS, but it also says that there are alternative pathways that are direct through the uni as well. So for interview, they kind of word things a little bit weirdly. So they say selection for interview is based equally on standardized GAMSAT overall score and GPA. I'm assuming when they say standardized, they're meaning just the weighted uh, GAMSAT score and they're not doing any additional statistical adjustment to either of those. So because it's equally weighted, that's our 50-50 weighting and therefore we can assume the combo score is being used to rank applicants. So another thing that UWA do slightly differently when it comes to offers and how they actually weight each of the different performances is they actually equally weight GPA, GAMSAT, and interview score. Most usually do 50% weighting on interview. UWA does 33% across the three of them each. And so then again, you'll be ranked on the weightings of all three of those and then selections will be made. For rural applicants, uh, they have a rural rating, so obviously it's a separate ranked list. They don't specify exactly how that works. I'd imagine they're just using a rural cohort so that the selection is going down two separate pecking orders effectively. In terms of how the offers work, you still will pick or select the boxes for what places you'd like to be considered for. So obviously if you're a domestic applicant, you've got the options of CSP and or bonded. You can choose just CSP, um, or you can choose just bonded as well, although I don't know why anyone would choose just bonded, um, or you can choose both of them. But there is no preferencing order or anything. What happens is whoever's ranked number one, that will be offered a CSP place, and they'll work their way down offering all their CSP places first and then bonded. Again, most unis will do this, some work on preference systems. In terms of deferrals, University of Queensland had deferral processes. UWA does not really have a deferral process. Again, pretty stock standard. Um, it's a highly competitive degree, has to start at a particular time. They have to know what the logistics and their student numbers are. And so they don't really have deferral programs in place. 
they do say in exceptional circumstances, you can, they can base it on uh, an, a personal application. And there we go. That's everything for UWA, basically. So um, a little bit of a shorter one. Uh, and because there's really not a whole lot of changes. They have a very, very streamlined approach. It's very similar to Sydney. It's probably even simpler than Sydney's because it just follows the GEMSAS process for the most part. They just do an unweighted GPA and uh, they have a slight different bonus for masters by research. That's pretty much it. Oh, and they do equal weighting on the, the three when it comes to interview offers, as for course offers at the end. Otherwise though, um, it's pretty stock standard. So hopefully that cleared some things up. Hopefully it's got you excited about maybe applying to it. I didn't realize that UWA was gonna be that high, high up my possible preferences, but looking at it now for GEMSAS, um, I, I still don't really know. It's probably gonna fluctuate around, but I would probably, I don't know, I might even, after Sydney, I might even actually put UWA as first on my GEMSAS preferences and probably Deakin second, because moving to Deakin for me would still mean relocating all of my work um, and moving houses and all the rest of it. So apart from being a little bit closer to family, being within driving distance, there's not really much more holding me to it. Um, and I think I think Perth actually interests me a little bit more and I'm probably potentially more competitive there than at Deakin, it's hard to measure. So UWA is actually quite high up uh, my preference order at the moment and I'm kind of bouncing between uh, uh, like again ignoring Sydney um, from GEMSAS and stuff I'm probably looking at UWA, Flinders uh, and then Griffith in Queensland and then uh, and Deakin those are probably the ones that I'm bouncing between but who knows things are probably going to change because I've got a few more of these to go I think next up I'm going to be doing uh, Notre Dame and I might I don't know the processes if they're very different but I might try to put Fremantle and Sydney together into one video next weekend um, and then I've got to move on then probably University of Wollongong uh, and work my way through those kind of portfolio unis and stuff like that. And I think there's just Macquarie and Bond, although I might leave Bond off because apparently it's all full fee, which to me is just like, I don't know. I don't know how helpful that is to a lot of people anyway. And it's definitely not one that I'm going to be considering. Let me know your thoughts anyway. Um, cool. All right. I'll leave that there and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.